Radiant Church. Hey, this is Jeremy Riddle. Just want to say it's a it's a joy for me. It's an honor to join you guys during your midweek service and to get to hang out with you <laughs> a little bit. It's been too long since I've been in your city. I can't remember if it was 2017 or 2018 that I was last in Kalamazoo and uh, with you all. But um, from all accounts, you guys are thriving and the Lord is meeting you and he's leading you. And um, yeah, and I consider it an honor just to pop in and get to share my heart um, a little bit. Um, uh, please give my love to the whole gang, to Lee, to Caleb, to Corey, and gosh, the whole gang. But um, hey, Caleb reached out and asked me to just um, share a bit of my heart and some of the stuff that the Lord's been stirring inside of me um, in regards to a book that I just wrote and um, called The Reset. And um, as I was kind of praying and pondering and, and kind of conversing with the Lord, just kind of going, what, what am I actually supposed to share and what am I supposed to talk on? Um, I really thought I was just supposed to talk about the Holy Spirit. And um, uh, it's not really the, the, the message of the reset, um, but I do think it's probably one of the most important um, resets that needs to happen in the church is where we begin to welcome and honor the ministry and the role and the leadership of the Holy Spirit and not just on a, on a corporate level and um, it'll only take place corporately when we begin to learn how to do that individually and I, I just wanted to share a little bit of my journey and uh, my relationship with the Holy Spirit um, which is I, I feel like an infant you know, so this is not me coming to you guys as, as an expert. I was having a, a chat with our pastor here, um, one of our pastors, and he is having these really profound encounters with Jesus. And, and he's like, I really know Jesus, and I've walked with Jesus all of my life. But in this season, I feel like I, I it's like the only way I can describe it is if I, I feel like I know 1% of, of Jesus. And isn't that always the case when we really come into closeness or proximity with the Lord? Um, it feels like everything that we've learned, all the years of knowledge that we've accrued, it's like, oh, Jesus, I only know you like 1%. Show me more of who you are. And um, I, I feel that same way when it comes to the Holy Spirit. And when I read about people who've had a profound relationship with the Holy Spirit, I'm like, oh, I feel like I haven't even started. Like, sincerely, haven't even started. I just, um, I've been reading Reese Howell's Intercessor. And I just read about his encounter with the Holy Spirit, and I'm still a little shaken inside. Like, I feel a tremble. Um, I'm just reading about it and going, oh, there's a journey that I've, that I've yet to go on. But I just want to share the little bit that I have experienced and hopes, guys, literally just in hopes that it awakens a hunger and creates an invitation for you guys to, to step and begin to walk into this. So I'm just going to pray. Holy Spirit. You are so precious. Your presence is so precious. And um, forgive us how we have lived ignorant of you. Holy Spirit, we want to fling wide the doors of our lives and our hearts to you. We want to know you. We want to be inhabited by you. We want to be full of you. We know that is a costly prayer to pray to the Lord. You have your way. You come and have your way, God. It's amazing how many times we pray that prayer and yet we have so many reservations and, and points of um, where, where we're like, no, no, that, that's, still, that's still ours. And Lord, but I pray that you would teach us what it means for you to come and have your full way in and through us. That is what our hearts are longing for. So give us the grace, the grace now to step into that more and more. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um, over the years, guys, um, you know, my journey started with some hippie parents who, who were saved in the Jesus movement. I was raised in a Christian family, raised in a Christian home. Most of what I learned initially about worship was through my dad's devotional life. It wasn't a lecture. It wasn't anything that he taught me um, per se on worship, although... Um, he did really help us, give us a, a solid base in the Word and in the Psalms. But most of it was just watching him worship, you know. And I um, still believe that's the most powerful way that worship catches. 
But, um, you know, and along the way, I've had many different encounters. I was part of the Vineyard Church. It's the church that I'm now back at, the Anaheim Vineyard, which was kind of the hub, the headquarters of the Vineyard Movement at the time. It was John Wimber's um, church. And, um, and I remember when the Toronto, there was a movement of the Spirit called the Toronto Blessing. It had a lot of different names, actually. But it really, really, it began to move here in the mid-90s, and it really touched the youth. And I was kind of caught up in that. I had some profound encounters with the Lord. And, um, and this is just a little bit of context for me and, and, and my story. And then somewhere along the way, um, I fell into that young adult black hole um, where you kind of get booted out of high school, but you don't really have a place in the big church, quote unquote. And, um, and at, uh, you know, the simultaneously, this girl that I had a crush on in high school, who was also was my same age, um, started going out with my youth pastor, which, um, you know, is, is, you know, many would say that's a valid reason for, for some bitterness, <laughs> some offense, uh, you know, at, at the church. But anyway, it, you know, honestly, it, it worked out beautifully. They're happily married now, a bunch of kids. And, um, and uh, but anyway, it just thrust me into this journey where I was, I didn't really want much connection with the church. And I didn't really walk away from the Lord, but I, I wasn't walking strongly with the Lord. And at that time, music had become like this all-consuming passion, and it's where I poured my broken heart out. You know, I started writing so many, you know, sad, sad, sappy love songs, and, and, um, and uh, you know, honestly, this dream took root in me where I just really, I had this thirst for influence, this thirst for significance, you know, and I, I just channeled all of it towards, towards all this energy towards trying to make it in mainstream rock and roll. And, um, and I, I was on that path for a good five years, and it was quite the wrestle because I knew that there was a call of God on my life. And, um, but I just really didn't want to surrender. Surrender to this day is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. And, um, and I'm so grateful um, that the Lord was persistent and uh, didn't relent until I finally laid it all down. I gave up my band, I gave up all, all these dreams and I just, I just entered into this, this, this period of consecration. I, I don't know what else to call it. I certainly didn't call it that at the time, but that's really what it was. It was consecration to the Lord. And, and I just began to pray, oh Lord, whatever you want to do with my life, you can do what you want with my life. And, and the Lord was faithful to answer that prayer, still faithful answering that prayer. Along the way, guys, I got married, got married super young. I got married when I was 21 years old, was a dad uh, by the time I was 23. I now have five kids. And 20 years later, I have a 19-year-old, a 17-year-old, a uh, 15-year-old, a, uh, oh gosh, it's getting, it's getting tricky, 12-year-old and an almost nine-year-old. So um, the journey's been rich. It's it's been full, and um, and uh, I've been leading worship for gosh who who knows how long. But I, I I've been so blessed to lead for multiple different streams of church and see multiple powerful worship movements of God sweep the earth. And um, I think in this twenty year journey of mine, almost thirty years really, honestly leading worship, I think the thing that I have been thoroughly convinced of is is this. The greatest need we have in the church right now, the greatest need we have in the church, and the hour is urgent. And, and, um, and I'll just leave it at that. The hour is urgent, and the greatest need we have is for men and women who are full of the Holy Spirit, full under the full influence and power of the Holy Spirit. We do not need more amazing anthems for the church. I mean, of course we do in that sense, but we don't need them anywhere near as much as we, as we need the Holy Spirit. And, and honestly, I, I have no real appetite for those anthems if they weren't birthed, if they were birthed apart from the Holy Spirit, not under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And we have this a bit of war with, a, with, a, with the influence of industry when it comes to worship and, and, and who is really going to be at the helm of this thing? Who's going to be leading this thing? And I'll tell you this, is that the kind of worship that we need in the earth is not going to be led by the industry. It's not going to be led by their stats. It can't be led um, um, by what their, 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 their pulses, their, their rewards, their, their, their numbers, the, 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 their, their formulas for success. It cannot be led by that. True worship must be led, birthed, born, of the Holy Spirit. And guys, I feel like there's a worship that's waiting to truly be unlocked in the earth, but it will only be unlocked under people who have given themselves fully to the Holy Spirit. It is going to be worshiped by the Spirit. Um, Philippians 3, verse 3 says, We who worship by 
the Spirit, which is such a key phrase, which means that the kind of worship that God is seeking is actually the kind that can only be born by the Spirit. It can only flow as we come under the influence of the Holy Spirit. It makes all the difference in worship, and beyond that, it makes all the difference in church, and beyond that, it makes all the difference in your personal life and, and in the witness that God has called you to be um, all, you know, on the earth. So I'm just going to share uh, a bit of my journey. I think the best blessing of my life was being dropped into an environment where the only way that I could deliver as a worship leader, quote unquote, deliver, <laughs> was, was to be led by the Holy Spirit. And I'd never been pushed, you know, before this. And I, I realized up until that point, I'd really just been dabbling. I, I had been responding to some instincts and different things when it came to uh, the, the Holy Spirit. Um, there were times where I was led by the Holy Spirit, but I, I really didn't even know how to discern, you know, the, the, the difference. And, um, but, you know, the Lord dropped us into a, the beautiful church that's now known around the world, Bethel uh, Church in Redding, California. And, um, and I, I, I remember coming into that church. For one, it was wild. <laughs> it was pretty, you know, you, you think you've experienced a charismatic church if you've been a part of the vineyard, but then you realize, like, oh, I've really been raised thoroughly evangelical. <laughs> like, I got no real grid for, for true Pentecostals or charismatics. And, um, and, and honestly, Bethel was, was, was much more wild then, you know, than it, than it is now in so many ways. But, um, but I think what, what was so precious to me was, was not all the manifestations and the incredible ministry times and all that kind of a thing. But I came into an environment that was really, when they said, we honor the presence of the Lord. Like we honor the voice of the Lord. We honor the movement of the Holy Spirit. And when we feel him moving, everything bends to follow his movement. Nothing. It's like the program literally went out the window. And I actually watched a senior leader. I've heard a lot of people talk that talk, but I've seen remarkably few people who actually um, meant it when they said it and would follow through with that. And, um, and, I, and I'll, what I'll just tell you is that's a terrifying place to lead worship in. <laughs> because, you know, I came from a pretty structured environment where I had about 30 minutes to lead worship. And then I, st I had this weird fluke thing happen on Christian radio where I had hit single in 2007. And I thrust open some doors to kind of experiment with being a Christian music artist, which I, I realized at the end of that time it was nothing that I was called or gifted to do. <laughs> And so, um, but I led worship probably for two years as a full-time itinerant traveling guy and, you know, honestly leading mostly in the Bible Belt, and um, uh, which was deeply humbling because I realized I didn't know how to, <laughs> there's so much about leading worship I didn't know, you know, how to do. And then out of that, um, I was dropped into Bethel. But, you know, what I realized is that I was used to being in control. I was used to knowing when things started, when thing, you know, things ended. I was used to watching the clock. I was used to, you know, doing all these things. So when I came to Bethel and Brian Johnson, you know, I was like nine months into my, my journey there at the church. Nine months in, Brian's like, hey, would you want, would you want to co-lead with me on a Sunday night? And I'm like, well, sure, you know, I'll do a couple songs. That seems pretty easy. And, um, and anyway, I should have known in soundcheck because he never led a song. He's just like, no, just keep going. Throw out another song. And I'm like, okay. okay. <laughs> so we're, we're going in and, and you know, I'm, I just started leading and I just started going for it. And, and um, you know, two songs, three songs goes by, you know, 30 minutes. And, you know, and then it gets to the 40 minute mark and I'm like out of songs. I'm out of breath. I, I, I don't know where to go. And I'm looking around for leadership. I'm looking around for like, what, how do I get off this train? <laughs> and I look over at Brian and, you know, it's, it's so funny thinking about it now. And he just, I looked over at him like, help, <laughs> you know, I don't know what to do. And he, and he looked back at me, just kind of shrugged, like, just like, you're, you're doing it, you know? And, um, and, you know, I did what all desperate worship leaders do. And I pulled out, I exalt thee. And, and um, but I was I was I was done, you know. And I think they finally had Danny Silk come up and rescue me, and and I think that was the shortest Sunday night service. I didn't realize that Sunday night services could go an hour, hour and a half, you know, in worship. That was all brand new to me. And so I think one of the best gifts for me is just realizing that the only way, the only way I could survive in that environment 
was to actually learn how to really intentionally follow the Holy Spirit and the promptings of the Holy Spirit. And, um, and um, I, I, made, I made a couple promises to myself, a couple vows. Um, and, and one of those vows is I realized that I was working against a clock in my head. And again, I've learned how to work with the clock you know, in my head, but this was important for me. I realized that there was something inside of me, an internal clock that told me that we were done, that the worship journey was done. And it happened about 30, 35 minutes. And everything after it was like, oh, we'll push in a little bit more, but we're really done. <laughs> and I realized that clock was going to kill me, so I had to throw that clock out. Uh, the other thing that I did, and this is the most important thing that I think is relevant for anybody, is that I, I made a vow to myself that whenever I felt the Holy Spirit rest, or the presence of the Lord rest on a moment, that I would not move on. Because what I realized is I watched that stream back, that first set of me leading back. What I realized is that because of that internal clock in my head, because I was always a song ahead of myself, I was rarely present to the moment. And I missed so many holy moments, is, is, what I, is what I call them. And by holy moment, I just mean, it's like that little moment where all of a sudden you're like, there's life on this, there's grace on this, there's, there's something happening in this moment. And, um, and because I couldn't recognize that, I would just move through them. And I was like already into the next song. Um, and I just violated so many things that I felt the Lord wanted to do. And so the next time I got up to lead worship with those two vows that I was going to worship until I, I was interrupted, literally. Someone's going to have to interrupt me. I'm like a bulldog. <laughs> I'm, I'm sinking my teeth into this. And, and you know, I was felt, it was the only way I felt like I could survive. And, and the other thing was is that I was going to, um, I, w I wasn't going to move on when I felt the Lord rest. And that night, guys, changed the, the course of my life. Um, as far as a worship leader is concerned, because that night it, worship went an hour and a half, and not once did I feel like I was about to run dry. Not once did I, was I really thinking about what song to do next. All I was doing was trying to follow the Holy Spirit, and and it's a bit of a terrifying experience. I mean, honestly, you're you're so out of your depth. It is it is what I call the best thing I know how to describe it as is, it's kind of like walking on water, and you are just following the Lord. You hear His voice, you see Him beckoning, saying, "Come." And you just step out of the boat and you begin to walk on water. And I know that's a, maybe a, a pretty grandiose, you know, idea. But, but for me, that was just being faithful of going like, I'm going to rest here if I feel the Lord resting. And in that resting, I would feel like a chorus or even a new little song. And I would, I would just be obedient and I would take a risk and I would follow. And it opened door after door. And we went deeper and deeper and deeper into the glory and the presence of the Lord. And honestly, that mark, that season marked like it's like a dividing line in my, in my ministry, you know, as a worship leader. It, it created, drew a line in the sand. And um, it was kind of pre really knowing how to follow the Holy Spirit and then giving myself with even just the littlest bit of intentionality to follow the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, something began to open up in worship and not just in worship, in, in my life and in my walk with God that has been so precious, I can never go back. I don't ever want to go back to, to just what I can accomplish in and of my own strength, to the power of a great set and a list of, you know, anthem, you know, packed songs that everyone will sing their hearts out to. It just, none of that satisfies me. The best band in the world doesn't satisfy me. The most incredible record, you know, of talent, you know, that would never satisfy me. I would trade it all for that moment, for just a moment where his breath, the breath of God is breathing and flowing. And, and those moments where he does, he puts you on like a glove. And the truth is, 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 is that that's not supposed to be an every so often occasion. I really think it's supposed to be a way of living. And there's an invitation to being given over under the control of the Holy Spirit. And, um, so just a couple little things I'm going to throw in there, throw out there, you know, in my journey. Maybe close with a couple stories. I feel like one of the most important things we can understand about the Holy Spirit is that He is a person. He's a person the same way that Jesus is a person, that God the Father is a person, the Holy Spirit is a person. And I, I feel like um, the Holy Spirit is really controversial in a lot of parts of the church. And... Um, Although less so now, less so now. I really feel like so, so many walls of opposition to, um, 
to the movement of the Holy Spirit have really come down, particularly in the past decade. And I feel like it's a new playing field. I think people are really hungry and open to the activity of the Holy Spirit. And uh, But one of the most important things that you can do when building a relationship with the Holy Spirit is just to acknowledge Him as a person. It's okay. It's like as a person, it's like you can commune with the Holy Spirit. He will speak to you. He will lead you. He will guide you. He's not just a force or, or some kind of mystical thing that happens um, um, in, 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 a, in a worship set or you know during a holy moment. He is a person. When we, and I feel like we've kind of created this language, which which I love and I, I use it as much as anybody, but we talk about the presence. And we talk about, oh my gosh, the presence was so strong, so strong in the room. You know, and it's like his presence came, or the presence came, and it was just like, da da da. We use his presence in a way, but sometimes it just feels like when we use that word, the presence, it feels very impersonal to me. And I hope we have an understanding, and again, this isn't to discipline people who use that language, um, but I hope we have an understanding. When we talk about the presence, we're talking about the person of the Holy Spirit. The one who has been who has been sent to us, given to us, the gift of our Father um, to lead us, possess us, convict us, uh, fill us, anoint us to, to step into all that we were made to do, to be true witnesses for Jesus, sincerely. And, um, and I think the less relationally we talk about the Holy Spirit, the more we impede, we, we, impede we, we hamper our ability to develop a real relationship with the Holy Spirit. And... Um, Ultimately, at the end of the day, we want to be people who don't just live by the Spirit, but we stay in step with the Spirit. Um, as Paul speaks to the Galatians of, he says, if we live by the Spirit, let us then keep in step um, with the Spirit. And for me, what this simply means, guys, is just learning how to follow, just learning how to follow Him. Uh, you know, and we have fresh language. Um, honestly, it was fresh for me uh, a decade ago. It may, it may need another, you know, um, we may need even more fresh language now, but you know this idea of hosting him, hosting his presence. What does it look like to host his presence? But I do still like that language. I, I think it's very important for us because that was one of the most important things. Is like the Holy Spirit is in me, and what kind of host am I being? Am I hosting him well? Am I aware of his presence? I'm, am I aware when he's trying to speak to me? One of those important things in my journey that I had to do was just simply grow in awareness. But that, that was just like, okay, I had to live with this awareness. I also had to kind of deal with my independent way of thinking and living. It was like when I would go to pray, that's when I would consult the Lord. But it was like I still had a very compartmentalized life. And I had to deal with a bit of that compartmentalization um, to really walk in step with the Spirit. And I had to start asking Him. And again, for me, the initial doorway was just worship sets. And I began to like ask the Holy Spirit, what songs? do you want us to sing? Uh, before I would just look through a book and be like, oh, I like that one and that one feels good. But I just began to be like how I was looked for every way that I could incorporate the Holy Spirit into my everyday life. And I would look for his activity. The same way I would look for his presence when he would resting in a worship set is the way I began to look for his activity in my everyday life as I would begin to prepare. And, um, and I would ask questions. And over and over, give permission. I, I would consecrate myself and be like, I, I live to do your will. That is what I want to do. Lead me. Lead me. Help me glorify Jesus. Help me be a witness for you. Help me be a light. Help me in this interaction with this person. I need wisdom. Holy Spirit, lead me in this. Help me in this financial decision. Help me. You, you, you get the idea. Help me in raising my kids. Holy Spirit, help me raise my kids. Um, and he has, he has, he is really faithful to answer that prayer. Oh, is he faithful? I also realize the most important thing, guys, if we really, really want to see his leadership increase in our lives is obedience. If you're going to ask him, you got to take risks. You got to take risks. And again, I initially began to discover this. I began to take these risks as a worship leader. Um, <laughs> And they terrified me, honestly. I'll, I'll just, but, and now it's like once, once you just get in a rhythm or a habit of taking risks, you, you start to just get over yourself a, a little bit and stop being afraid of looking like a fool or, you know, wiping out, you know, whatever, whatever it may look like. Um, but, for, but initially, this was the most deeply intimidating thing. And so for me, it just, it just started by learning how to follow him in a worship set and learning how to, Wait when he said wait, and 
um, when that was a sense. And again, I've never heard necessarily the audible voice of God. It's always these impressions in my in my gut, um, of like just wait, or I would feel like the little just a little prompting, a chorus would come into my mind, or something like that, and I'd go like, well, I don't know if that's the Lord, but I'm just going to risk risk to find out. So I'll just share a couple stories. It's the best way to illustrate this. Um, you know, there's a time I was leading, and um, I was excited to lead. I was leading with um, some amazing worship leaders, friends of mine, who are full of the Holy Spirit. And um, But we were leading, and for whatever reason, the night was just dead. It was like people were excited. It's a typical night of worship, but but it didn't go anywhere. Every song that we lead, it led, it was just like it hit this ceiling, and I, I couldn't figure it out. I and I, um, and I, I will, I will, I will say this, you know, because th- this is the point. Here, here's what I've discovered about following the Holy Spirit: is that the spiritual breakthrough that we are longing to see only comes when you follow the Spirit, and that just makes sense, doesn't it? But it's really, really true. If you're hungry to see real, true spiritual breakthrough, something open up in an atmosphere, in an environment, an actual real breakthrough coming and invading people's lives where they begin to get wrecked and their hearts begin, they begin to encounter Jesus at another level and they step into deeper intimacy um, um, uh, in, in his presence. Gosh, there's, there's so many different works the Lord, where addictions get broken off people's lives, where freedom begins to break out in a room. Uh, you, you can go down the, down the list where the, basically where the works of the devil get destroyed and Jesus is exalted and glorified. If you want to see real spiritual breakthrough, you have to learn to follow the Holy Spirit. And so I, I'm in this thing and I just felt like it was dead and we were hitting walls and and we were singing songs that normally always open something up. And um, I remember we were singing, Great Are You, Lord. And this is, I don't know, four or five years ago in the song. <laughs> it's still doing its thing now, but it had just come on the scene and it was like explosive. But for whatever reason, even that, like even that bridge, like how can that bridge not break something through? But again, I've realized it, it's it's not the song. It's not the, the power of the song. It is obedience to the Holy Spirit. I remember hitting a moment and coming to a down moment and um, and just going like, I don't know what's missing. And I just began to ask the Lord and I began to search in my spirit for 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 what he would say. And I, all I felt with is like, sing the bridge again. Sing the bridge again and something will break. And um, But sing it with faith. And I felt I was supposed to exhort people to essentially sing it with faith. Um, um, uh, <laughs> so I did I, and it was really awkward and I'm like guys I, I don't know I don't normally talk on the microphone a lot during worship but I'm like I don't really understand this but I feel like we're just supposed to sing that bridge again but we're supposed to sing it with and I said gusto instead of gusto or I, I don't, I don't <laughs> and, and I was just like we're supposed to sing this with faith and I'm like who's with me you know kind of thing and people are like all right, you know, they actually went there with me. And I don't know what it was, but that simple act of faith and obedience to what the Lord asked me opened up one of the most crazy journeys in worship I, you know, I've, 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 I've ever been in. And it was like something literally broke open in the heavens. And we went on this crazy, creative 45-minute journey um, where I don't even remember all the songs that were sung and everything that happened, but it was wildly prophetic, beautifully creative, and full of Him. And I, and I had that phrase. It was like where that picture first came to mind. I'm like, we're walking on water. We're walking on water. Our eyes on you. We're walking on water because you've asked, asked us to. And um, uh, gosh, there was the time where, where um, uh, similar impression. I had an impression when I was preparing for worship that I was supposed to, that the Lord wanted to break addictions. Um, um, uh, during Spirit Breakout. And again, this is a lot of this stuff was just new new in my journey. So they stick out to me because it was where I, I took a risk. You know, I take these risks all the time, every day. I've not stopped taking these risks. But these were the ones that, that I was, they were just the discovery process. So they're like, you know, um, branded in my, in my mind. But, um, but I was faithful to sing out and go after addictions. Um, in the middle of, of singing Spirit Break Out and, and just say, hey, I feel like when we when we sing this, this is what's going to happen. And I and I just said, and it wasn't, again, guys, we can, let me just warn you against something. None of this is a formula. 
because is that's that's when we just mimic when people try and mimic there will always be some measure of spiritual power but it won't actually the only way you're really going to step into this thing is when you take the risk for yourself when you seek the lord for yourself when you discern what it is because you can follow your favorite worship leader and you can be like oh i really liked what they did right there i'm going to do that same thing and you might experience a measure of power but you will not really step into the fullness of the spiritual authority that you individually we're meant to carry in the Lord unless you go on this journey for yourself. And I just want to, want to say that. So, um, Spirit Break Out, you know what's so cool is like, I think it was seven years later, I got one of the most powerful testimonies about how this girl had a deep, deep you know, eating disorder. Um, so intense, she never thought she was going to get free from it. But she would listen, she listened to that song nonstop for nine months while she was in this battle and she was ultimately delivered. But it was just that one song in that one moment. Where, where something was, de was declared. And guys, wow, I, I could go on there. <laughs> um, hmm. I think that's enough. Um, There's so many fun stories I could tell, but I, I think um, it would get long. I, I think closing here, the biggest obstacle, I used to think that the biggest obstacle to, to you know, the church really beginning to move in, 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 a, in, a, in a power and a demonstration, a demonstration of power, you know, of the Spirit. I used to think it was theological opposition. I used to think that people were just, um, um, that, that, was, that was where the root of it was. And I, I actually don't think that that's really, really the thing that, that stops people from experiencing the fullness of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I, I think it's control. I think it's our need for control. I think it's our unwillingness to step outside of ourselves um, to take risk. You know, faith, which pleases God. It's impossible to please God, actually, without faith. Faith, you know, John Wimber used to say, he's the founder of the Vineyard Church Movement, but he used to say, faith is spelled R-I-S-K, and it's risk. And there's something about obedience to the Holy Spirit that is risky, it's costly. You don't know how it's going to go. And, um, and I really had to, I had to die to a lot of parts of myself that, like, because your image is on the line, your reputation is on the line, you feel all these things. And, and you know, who likes, who, who likes looking like, like a fool, in, you know, in front of people, but and nobody, but I had to overcome that and go like, I want to follow you more than I want to, quote unquote, look good or look like I have it all together. I want, I'm hungry, I'm hungry more hungry for this than I am to try and preserve something myself. And someone described being fully yielded to the Holy Spirit as simply giving the Holy Spirit what he wants. And I love that because it, it makes it very, very practical. Sometimes we don't know what does it mean to yield? Does it mean to get low or, you know, this internal posture? It just means giving the Holy Spirit what he wants. And, and when you, um, just on this journey, guys, start Start with the littlest acts of faith. You don't have to jump off some big, you know, you know, cliff first first time out. Um, just begin to cultivate, begin to have a conversation with the Holy Spirit and watch. Not everything I've taken a risk on turned out to be the Holy Spirit. It's just how we learn. There is no other way to learn than to just take a risk to follow um, the Holy Spirit and those little impressions. But everyone has to learn how the, how the Lord speaks to them, how you hear His voice. And the only way you know is, is literally where you just, whatever it is, impressions, little audible voice, pictures, um, words, I, you know, I don't know. This would be a great conversation for you guys to have. It'd be a great small group conversation, just like, hey, how do you hear the voice of God? How does the Holy Spirit speak to you? How does the Lord speak to you? And, and it's, a, it's part of a way how we discover what His voice sounds like and how to follow Him. But if we never take risk, we never really know what's Him and what's not. You can discern that as, as, you, as you grow in maturity, but initially it really takes risk. And, um, and, I, and I learned by stepping out and then watching as heaven would step in behind me. And um, I'll just tell one last story. You know, we were, I was leading an event called Descend. It was in Orlando, Florida. And I, I you know, I, I, I've kind of given up trying to really prepare a set list um, because, I mean, I still do, and I send band songs and that kind of a thing, but but at certain events, I just like, guys, here's a list of 10 songs, I really don't know what's gonna happen. That's kind of what I tell them, because I honestly, I honestly don't know. And so 
um, you know, the rough set list that I had, we were going to do All Hail King Jesus, like right out the gates. And But I just didn't, I just wasn't sure how the Holy Spirit, you know, would, would lead. And I've never led, never led a stadium before. And honestly, I've, I've done a couple stadium events where it's like there's supposed to be a bunch of people that show up and then it's like 8,000 people, <laughs> you know, in an arena, which is a ton of people, but but not when it, it doesn't feel like a ton of people when it's in like a 50,000 seat arena, you know. But anyway, we're, we're doing this event. And uh, it was my turn. We were the last worship set of the night. And um, and and we get up to, to lead. And, and my friend, Michael Koulianos, who has a you know um, amazing ministry with his wife, Jess, in, in Orlando, Florida, called uh, Jesus Image. And just love what God is doing through them. But he was praying. And he, he began to pray, Lord, let it rain. Let it rain. And I couldn't hear him because my in-ears were in. And I was on my face and kind of overwhelmed by the moment. Um, it was such a significant moment, and I don't know how many people, there's maybe 50, 60,000 people in that arena. And, um, and, um, and I get up to lead, and I take one of my ears out, and I can hear like a small group of people beginning to sing, let it rain, let it rain. And honestly, I have not thought about leading that song for maybe a decade. You know, it was, it, it, hadn't, it was not in my mind, it wasn't on the set list. And um, and anyway, I and you just ha you have to hear me because I've led for a lot of different groups of people, and and most of the time when when a chorus starts at a youth conference or whatever, people start to sing a song. It's not the leading of the Holy Spirit, and most of the time I I, I don't follow it. And and um, but in this moment, I just had that immediate sense. That's the Lord. That's the Lord. And I got Cassie Campbell, most world's most amazing worship bass player, bass player period. She's just remarkable. I had her on the bass. And they just kind of know the drill. So they're on the they're on the one. <laughs> they're swelling on the one, which is, you know, we were the key of C about to go into uh, the beginning, you know, of the song. And, and I just start to sing out, let it rain. And um, not knowing whether it was the right key, whether I could even sing the whole song, um, um, it, none of that stuff matters. You just have to jump off a cliff, you know. And I, I did have a couple months where I'm like, this is not the moment. A stadium, leading a stadium in worship is not the moment where you want, you want to fall flat on your face. But again, I think what I'm so grateful for is the momentum of consistency and learning to follow and be obedient to the Holy Spirit is what steadied me in that moment. And, and, and in that moment, the whole arena erupted and let it ring. I'm going to sing that. And guys, craziest thing happened is that it rained and it was the craziest like little rain and it's Orlando and it rains all the time but there was not rain in the forecast and what's even crazier is, is that someone sent me a clip of the radar you know a little uh, you know an image of, of where it was raining and it was just this tiny tiny circle over over the stadium and that was the only place that rain was falling um, in, in, in any of the surrounding area and it was this this crazy rain it didn't soak anyone it was this, this gentle misting rain that just fell on us the entire time we sang Let It Rain. And then the second we moved into another song, it lifted. And I just felt like one of those kisses from the Lord. And, I'm, and I just, I look back and I go, oh Lord, thank you. Thank you that I didn't just go with the program. Thank you that I had, I had learned a little bit in this journey, just a little bit in this journey of how to follow the Holy Spirit. Um, and again, all I, all I want to do in this is make you hungry. That's all, that's all I want to do. I, 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 and, um, and not because for any of the big stuff, I, I really think this is about, it's about the small. It's about learning how to cultivate this in our everyday lives and, and, and inviting, acting like we are actually under the authority of our Lord and King. And for me, I've had to really break with so much orphaned, independent ways of operating that were ingrained in me. You know, it's just stuff I... It's almost dysfunctional stuff I, I learned along the way. And um, the thing about the Christian life, guys, I've read leadership book after leadership book. I've wanted to be a great leader. I've studied great leaders, all that kind of a thing. But the distinguishing mark about Christian leadership is that it's more about following than it is about leading. And actually, we're only being faithful to lead his people well when we are following in his footsteps and we are avidly after his direction and we're seeking him in every area of our lives and I feel like the Lord wants to open stuff up for you guys he wants to open stuff up for you guys as you begin to give yourselves 
And by the way, I just want to encourage all you guys who are laboring in the prayer rooms. Caleb just asked if I would just speak into that. And I just want to encourage you guys who are laboring in the prayer rooms. This, this is where this is really solidified. This is where you build that history with God. This, this is the thing. Let alone that prayer, guys, is the thing. There's one thing that I came out of 2020 going. I'm like, I must give myself to prayer. And I gave myself to prayer. And I'm beginning to watch something unlock in my life. If you guys are praying three times a day, you're on to something. Stay the course. Stay the course. God is going to meet you in that. His ear is attuned, like right now. Like he is, he is hearing those prayers. But here's the thing about those prayers. We, we, we need to begin to pray prayers that are aligned. The Holy Spirit is the only one that, that knows what we need to be praying over the saints and over the church. And, that, and that's why we need his leadership in prayer more than ever. And may the Lord open your ears. May he open your eyes to, to you, know, you know, in that realm. Anyway, but I just encourage you guys. I was like, lit my heart up just hearing that you guys were praying three times a day. Let's go. Um, be encouraged and um, go after the Holy Spirit. But I just feel like the Lord wants to open up so much for you guys who are listening, whether you ever become a worship leader or any of those kinds of things, but just in your everyday life. Maybe you're running a business. You know, it's, it's like, um, you know, raising a family. All, all those kinds of things. The Holy Spirit wants to meet you and fill you and lead you. In, in, in those places. And so I'm just going to pray and bless you guys and, and um, go from there. Hmm. The song that comes to mind is, um, Lord, I want more of you. Holy Spirit, rain down on me. It's an old, old song, but that is the cry of our hearts. We just want you. We want you, Holy Spirit. We need you, Holy Spirit. Our programs, our performances are not enough. They're not enough to really shake, shake things or shift things in our cities. Um, they're not even enough to do, like we are literally bankrupt without you. Like unless you move, unless you breathe, unless you possess us, Holy Spirit, we won't step into anywhere near close to the fullness of what you have designed for us. So Holy Spirit, come upon us. Show us. Teach us how to follow you. Teach us how to be present to you. Speak to us. Open up our ears. Unstop our ears. We give you permission to speak. We give you permission to lead. We give over authority. I pray for those moments where, where we know we're supposed to be. Forgive us for our disobedience. In those moments where we know that we should have followed you, where you were speaking. And Lord, we want to set a new course today of obedience. No matter what the cost, we are ready to pay the price to follow you. No matter what. Holy Spirit, come have your way. Lead us. Lead your church. Lead your people. We give you our very bodies. Come and fill your people. In your precious name I ask. Amen. God bless you guys. It's been so good getting a chance to speak with you.